welcome everyone. Uh, welcome back to Q&A with Coach. My name is Coach Mariano Sanchez and with me uh, today we have the lovely, the talented, um, it is my uh, 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 honor to introduce uh, Joanne Sato, um, a fitness manager for Club Genetech. So welcome Joanne uh, to Thank you, Mariano. With Coach, yeah. So Joanne, let's get right into it. Let's just, um, what is, what's, how's life been for you? You know, fill this in. What's going on in the world of Coach Joanne? Oh man, it's been a little bit crazy. Um, I have two small girls, one in kindergarten and one is almost a two-year-old. So that's been really fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she's kind of all over the place. And so you it's- You like secure all the little doors and everything because she, get, she getting into everything now? Yeah, yeah. She, she, can, she can do all of that and more and mm -hmm. surprises me every day. And so she keeps us on our toes, you know, while I'm trying to get onto meetings, while my husband's trying to work. Um, and also too, when my, you know, when my older daughter's trying to do her, her work as well. So it's, it's been a little bit chaotic, but we've been, we've been managing to get through it. <laughs> so what's the typical, so I can imagine you have to be very strategic through your day with them being like very young. So is that like scheduled out like a regular day? So how do you, yes. how do you feel about that? What's, what's a day? Walk us through a day. I have a timeline written in my, in my notebook for what we have to do for the day. Um, so I have a timeline for me and then a timeline for my kids as well. So it's, you know, we go from morning until evening until, you know, we hit the hay and do bedtime story at night. And then I am super exhausted, my husband too. And, and then it's, and then it's, you know, and then it's back to the grind again for the next day. But yeah, we, we literally take it like hour by hour because uh -huh. we have to, um, sometimes it doesn't go that way, but you know, to each his own, we want to make sure that we have some sort of a structure for ourselves. Yeah, I feel like times like this, I, I don't have any kids, but I, could, I feel like times like this, the, um, the uh, children's, like, uh, the care industry is greatly missed, right? It's, like, a lot more appreciated in times, like, now it's like, whoa. Um, For sure, yeah. Because it really does. It really takes a village. You know, they, they say that, but it really does. I mean, um, you know, we haven't even seen, like, our parents, you know, in a while. It's been a while, and, you know, my mother-in-law does come – and she usually helps out once a week and we, we, you know, miss her and we miss my mom. And, and so, yeah. you know, we, we do a lot of that stuff on FaceTime and like Zoom and stuff to see them, but it's, it's really not the same, you know, so we can't wait until that day comes when we can see them again. Is your, is your family nearby? Do you have a lot of family in the area, in the immediate area? Um, not too much. I mean, um, you know, Jason grew up um, in the East Bay and then I kind of grew up in the Central Valley. So our all of our family is across the bridge um so we do have some friends and family obviously on this side but you know everybody really has like you know their own families that they're dealing with and so you know we don't want to bug them yeah yeah <laughs> we all know everybody's going through it um all together so it's nice to have like a community of friends to like chat with about like hey you know how are your kids doing and how are your kids doing it's it's really good to have that sort of family network um and friends to kind of just talk to because you know i'm obviously there hasn't been a pandemic in a really long time. And so, you know, we're all kind of going through it together and it's really good to have that sort of help, I guess. Have you had, I've talked to a couple of people and they've had to do, <clears throat> they've dealt with, well not dealt with, but they went through their, their kids having birthdays or celebrations. Did you go through, have you had a, you've had a birthday or anything like that that they had to go through or? Uh, my husband had his birthday in oh. April actually. And so, I literally on my mantle back here um, had a leftover unicorn birthday <laughs> banner uh -huh. that I put up for him. I got hats from um, New Year's. I mean, I was just I was just grabbing whatever I have. Um, but like, I love throwing birthday parties, and so I did have a, a bunch of stuff in the house around the house. It was you know a mixture of different decor, but he really appreciated it. We were able to you know still order um, a cake and some ice cream. Um, yeah, and then um, next month, it'll be June, and my, my older daughter will be celebrating her sixth birthday, and so I've already, I've already grabbed some, some items online, because she's already told me she wanted a Frozen 2 birthday, so I've got some stuff coming in the mail, um, you know, whether or not we just have it here at home, or um, her classmates will do a drive-by, I think. We've already set that up, so that'll be super fun. Oh, that would be cute. I like, I really... Um... I mean, it's sad that people can't be together, obviously, and that 
Um, I mean, we're human, right? We love that touch. We love that interaction. And I, and I can, and everyone's missing, I'm missing it for sure. Uh, but I, I love seeing how the community gets together and does the drive-bys and does the special gatherings or the clapping for the uh, frontline workers. Um, I always appreciate that and, 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 and love that seeing how, how tight we can come together, even a time like Yes, for sure. So you've been um, in fitness now for quite some time. So right out of college, you got into fitness, correct? Yep. Actually, even when I was in college. Okay, you were doing fitness. So you were working in the industry already, like getting your way, working your way through, through school. So you went to SF State. Why SF State? Okay. What took you to SF State? I actually, um, growing up, because I was, I, you know, I grew up in the Central Valley, and so it was kind of small town. And so I had always been enamored with like the big city life in San Francisco. And, um, you know, I, I got accepted to UC and I was supposed to go down south. Um, and like at the last minute, I changed my mind. My parents got so mad at me, but I, I honestly didn't want to move that far away from them. I, I knew that San Francisco was only about an hour and a half away and I could always come back if I needed to. Um, so I, I did almost like every weekend came back and forth. So it was, it was kind of like the perfect place for me to go and be away from them and like still be able to come back and yeah. and um you know because i love my family and it, it's it's always kind of good to kind of touch base um and so I, I felt like if i moved further away it would have been really hard for me to um you know keep that connection with them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh yeah that's 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 an important decision to make i i coached college wrestling for a long time and that's conversation that we'll have with athletes a lot of times how important is it to be close to your family is it important to be within a drive within a quick flight, within a quick bus ride, like what, like you gotta ask yourself those questions. Um, oh, cool. And so you went to SF State and you studied kinesiology, business management, I believe. I did, yes. I double majored, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it was, busy, it yeah. was a lot. Yeah. And, I and was so, super busy. And so what got you into fitness? So your background's in dancing, correct? So how long, yes. how long have you been dancing? What, it's, let's talk about that for a second, because I know that is kind of like, like it's what brought you into the industry. So what motivated you to start moving? Um, really, it was like this after school program that I did when I was like in the fourth grade. Um, it was really just dancing with, um, it was just dance. And um, I just remember that I choreographed my very first dance um, to Candy Rain. <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a great song. I think Jacqueline actually has her tutorial up with that song. It brings me back so many good memories. So um, from when I was a little girl. Um, but yeah, I was just always in love with movement. And I also did activities like, you know, karate and swimming. And so I was super active and I just love moving. So that's how I kind of got into it. And then I, and then I, you know, was on the dance team in high school. And then I also got into doing musicals and plays. Mm -hmm. So just being that on this on stage was really, um, really cool. You know, I, I kind of grew up very, very, very shy. And so I think that's the reason why my mom kind of put me in those programs is to really get me out of my shell um, and then continued on into college. And I actually was going to major in dance, but then I decided I would broaden my horizons um, and incorporate all of movement because yes, I do love dance, but I also love all kinds of movement. So um, kinesiology felt like the best fit for me. Cool. And when did you know that you wanted to share this and you wanted to motivate and inspire when 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 did you have that in you when i feel like a lot of coaches there's that what like there's a moment or the moment in time or maybe there's a another coach or another influencer of ours and and, and, and it kind of sparks that maybe we don't know it right away but i feel we could always kind of look back and we kind of know the moment. when was your moment that you kind of knew that you wanted to to share and give that passion to people um well i do have a very specific moment i actually in high school got into a car accident um, I think I was like 16 at the time. And so I was like sandwiched in between two cars. Um, it wasn't like terrible, but it was a bad accident. I had to go to physical therapy. Um, took me over like six to eight months to get, to get over uh, the back issues. And so kind of seeing the transition of like, okay, I need to get better and get back to what I love to do um, really kind of helped motivate me to decide like, hey, this is kind of the field that I, that I want to get in. And so they were super inspiring. Uh, my physical therapist and the aides at, at um, that physical therapy clinic. And I kind of saw the benefit of, of having somebody to really kind of push me and motivate me. They're like, you're going to get back to dancing. Don't worry. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it, it was really what I needed at the time to really kind of push me forward into the career that I have now. 
Wow. That is pretty, it's pretty powerful. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And so um, being at Club G now, so you went from college, you were dancing, and then you got uh, in, into with uh, health and fitness, and that brought you now to Club Genentech, right? Which we yeah. missed, which we missed greatly. Hopefully we get back in there soon. What's been one of the uh, biggest changes that you feel the industry from when you started to when you came through Club G uh, to now, and with this pandemic, what's been the biggest challenge for you um, so far? I think the biggest challenge is really just um, staying connected to the people that we we built connections with. Um, you know, it's hard to go from seeing your you know people that take your classes or that you see really on a on a daily basis to just not seeing them anymore, mm -hmm. and it's having to find okay, well, how do we connect with them? And obviously, there's you know these these tools of technology that are that are helping us um, along the way, but it's we really have to go and search for it and and you know like tread through the mud to get there. Um, we're gonna get there, but um, it's it's kind of taking us a little bit of time. You know, everybody's in the same position of trying to figure out well how do we get back to um, you know helping all of the people that you know we had in person. So, and yeah, the industry itself um, is definitely gonna change. Technology is gonna be just a little a piece of it. I think it's it's not, it's not gonna go away. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to still continue to work from home. And so we want to make sure that we still have options for those people as well, so that we stay connected to them instead of just the people that we have physically seen every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I agree. I felt like at the beginning of all this and having to um, engage with different um, people, I, I, felt, I felt so well, disconnected, right? Yeah. But now, but now I think about it, like we're, we, we could, we can engage with so many more people if, if we do it correctly. And mm -hmm. so really just turning the mindset around for me, which what I needed to do, I needed to turn this and not think of it so negatively and think about the opportunity here to really go out there and engage with, with the broad um, spectrum of people, which I know we're going to be doing soon. I'm really excited for all that. We are so excited. Yeah. So do you want to talk about that uh, a little bit right now? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us kind of what's going on. There's a big week ahead of us. I know it's all dropping today. So when you're watching today, this, yeah. it all drops. So yeah. Can you kind of uh, share a little bit, please? Yeah, for sure. We've been working really hard to um, bring everybody live um, virtual classes. And so Mariano and myself will be, you know, um, teaching some of these classes. So we're really excited. Um, and, you know, it goes across the company and, we hope that people um, out in Roche in, Indiana in Indianapolis are able to join us as well. So we want to, you know, cross um, over to make sure that they also can um, take some live classes as well. And what's really exciting is that like, you know, in, on Zoom, we can have, I think, like 500 participants. And that to me is super amazing. Um, you know, when you're in the classes, like at Club Genentech, um, the capacity, you can only hold so many people, but it, it's kind of cool to know that we could help that many people at one time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited that. So yeah, so make sure you guys take a look at the schedule, um, register for those classes on time so that we can let you in. There's going to be a cutoff time, so make sure that you get there on time. We'll cut you out, you're not going to be able to get in, but we'll get you in the next time, right? Um, and then also check out our pages. Uh, we're doing tons of challenges of the week. Check them out. I know hopefully you're doing them. We got a lot of things going on in there. Um, we have a cool little foodie channel going on. We got a cool uh, sports review channel going on with cats. So y'all make sure you check that out. Uh, Joanne, so I know we're super busy. We like to end these with a little rapid fire questions here. I hope you're ready for these. I'm going to throw at you a bunch of silly hey. random nonsense questions. Uh, say whatever comes off the top of your head. The first okay. one is going to be, what's your favorite song? My favorite song. Um, okay, so I, I've used this song in some of my cool dance for classes, but it is the Somewhere Over the Rainbow Somewhere Over song. the Rainbow. Yes, it's the ukulele version. Oh, okay. The Hawaiian you know that song? The Hawaiian song, yes. All right, okay. Yes. Beautiful song, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite hobby? Other than dancing, I am a DIYer. Like I love to create things and make things, art, photography, mm. you have, you know, whatever. So I like to make things with my hands. I love painting. So just, just making things. What's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Ooh, well, 
let's see i've tried well escargot is not like super strange but uh -huh. it, it is a snail when you actually like think about it that's strange too. um I am Filipino, so I've tried bullet, and I know, I think, is it Tiffany that said that before? Yeah, it's like your time has been like, yeah. No, thank you. Someone actually sent me a photo after that, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I'll draw it right there. All right, what's, uh, what's, what's your dream job? Dream job? Probably to be, like, um, on stage on Broadway or even a backup dancer for Beyonce. I don't know. <laughs> fly girl, your fly girl, the old school fly girls over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> what's your uh, What's your favorite summer activity? Favorite summer? Well, I love to travel. So traveling, and then being poolside, ordering some snacks, <laughs> and a cocktail. <laughs> take, take me, take me with you, please. Uh, who's your favorite superhero? Superhero. Okay. Well, shout out to all the female superheroes. Um, my favorite one at the moment is Captain Marvel. She's awesome. She can fly. First of all, she can fly. And she has like the superhuman strength. Um, that's everything that I want. Flying and superhuman strength. <laughs> flying, flying's a big one for me too. Okay. Describe yourself in three words. Three words. Creative. Okay. Motivated motivated and adventurous Ooh, all right and my last quote my favorite one my favorite question is what's your favorite quote my favorite quote is one that i've used since i was a teenager it is i fall i get up but meanwhile i keep dancing keep dancing keep moving i love it keep going yeah, yeah, Joanne, thank you so much for being with us. Everyone, make sure you uh, check out our, uh, our, our channel here. Join our workouts. Join the live workouts. Do the workouts of the day. Again, thank you, Joanne, for being here. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, um, and I will see you all hopefully soon. Until next time, Club G, please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay fit. Okay, y'all? Have a good one. Bye.